It's been over two years since I started this channel, of where I first was making videos about scholarships. Over the years, people have told me via YouTube comments, emails, and through social media that thanks to my videos, as well as personally helping them edit their scholarship essays, that they were able to receive $5,000, $10,000, and even full ride scholarships. These students came from as close as where I live in Texas, Arizona, North Carolina, to as far as Nepal, India, Canada, Australia, Hong Kong, and the DR Congo in Africa. And over time, I've been able to win a couple more scholarships for myself. However, my scholarship process has changed over the years from my last three uploads. So now, I'm here to share with you how I'm still winning scholarships, 20 so far and counting, and how you too can win. This is a limited short series called The Scholarship Algorithm. Okay, so regarding this scholarship, before I go into the details of what was written in it, I just wanted to share with you all the journey that I had to go through just to get the scholarship. So I applied for the scholarship at like 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, nearly forgot to apply for it, but I was like, you know what, I should. And I initially heard about this scholarship because I follow the Shade Room on Instagram and I just was I just so happened to be scrolling down my feed and I saw that Future had this opportunity of where he was giving out two thousand dollar scholarships to each city he was touching down on for his um, for his tour he was giving away two thousand dollar scholarships to each person at each of those concerts so I thought to myself well since I just won a scholarship from Floyd Mayweather the boxer a couple months back that I can win this one too and I did so I applied for it at 3 a.m. It was due at like noon that day and then like less than 48 hours later I got notified via email saying hey you won the scholarship in order to actually confirm and receive your scholarship you have to be down at his concert in Austin that very night at 7 p.m. and I was at um <laughs> I was in Denton and the concert's in Austin and that's like a five hour drive and I don't have a car and no one was willing to drive me so what I did I took a lift from my school to Grand Prairie then from Grand Prairie to Austin and then from Austin from Austin's bus stop my cousin who lives in Austin he picked me up took me to the concert we nearly got lost but we finally figured out how to get there and he dropped me off it was just a whole adventure and I went to the concert with a friend of a friend and had a pretty good time but yeah, it, I went through a lot just to get this scholarship, which was $2,000, and I am forever grateful for that because money is money, and I need it because I am not trying to take out more loans to satisfy Miss Sally Mae. So, with that being said, let me get into the scholarship essay that I wrote, if I could just pull it up on my drive here. Okay, I think I'm going to do like a screen recording of this. Okay, so the scholarship reads, the title is I'm a Dreamer Scholarship, that was the name of the scholarship, and the essay title is How Receiving the Scholarship Would Be a Dream Come True. <clears throat> Before I got into my university, during my senior year of high school, I applied for well over 75 scholarships, and thankfully I was able to receive enough funding, enough finances to fund my first two years in school. Through my experience, I wanted to help others with the scholarship process, so I decided to start a YouTube channel called ESP Daniela. I launched the channel several years ago and posted, and posted a series of videos related to how to apply for scholarships, how to write scholarship essays, and how to ace scholarship interviews. Over the years, I have heard from people as close as Texas and Arizona to as far as Nepal, India, and Nigeria tell me via email or in the YouTube comments that thanks to my advice and extended personal outreach, they were able to receive partial or even full ride scholarships. The first time someone told me that they won a scholarship thanks to me, a nursing student from Arizona, I screamed. And the first time someone told me that they won a full ride scholarship, an international student from the DR Congo in Africa, I cried for nearly an hour. It's crazy to think that my words and my advice had and continue to have the impact to change other people's lives, not just in my own state or country, but across the globe. And as I am writing this essay, I'm crying all over again, just thinking about it. There was just something so much more powerful, rewarding, and fulfilling in helping others than only serving myself. 
Now flash forward to today. I'm currently in my junior year of college studying broadcast journalism. The scholarships that covered my freshman and sophomore year have already expired, so now I am taking out thousands in phones. I'm still applying for scholarships daily as if it were a part-time job, but it's rare that I can find ones that I am eligible for. Why? That's because the vast majority of scholarships are catered towards high school seniors who will be incoming freshmen. However, even though it is difficult for me to find scholarships for myself, I am still helping others find ones for themselves. Earlier this year, I launched a service called Scholarly, of where I help people find scholarships that they are likely to win and personally help them with editing their essays. Most of the people I work with don't write well in English because it's like their second language or because writing is simply not their strong point. However, I believe that a person should not be denied or not considered for educational financial assistance simply because of a grammatical or language barrier. One's literacy level should not dictate or define one's intelligence level. So part of my job is to bridge that gap so that those I can assist can be that much closer to overcoming that language barrier that blocks their access to a higher education and funding. I take what I learned from my journalism classes and apply it to how I help people construct their essays and thoroughly research scholarships they should consider applying for. If awarded this scholarship, it would be a dream come true because, like I mentioned earlier, I am constantly applying and searching for scholarships, dedicating up to two, two to three hours per day, but keep getting denied time after time after time again because as a current college student, I'm dealing with a pool of less than 10% of scholarships I can apply for. It can be discouraging, but in a way, it is humbling to be denied. It reminds me that I am not entitled to any scholarship and that the other person who won is just as deserving. It is not my place to envy their blessing when my own blessing may just be in the final stages of shipping its way into my life. With that being said, I just want to thank Future and everyone behind the I'm a Dreamer scholarship fund. A 2000 scholarship may seem like nothing to some people, but for me that could fund an entire class, including a meal plan going into the spring semester. I aspire to create my own scholarship fund one day, so to see that this opportunity is made available to current college students, I would love for there to be more like this going forward. And then I signed it at the end, Carlin Green, with my digital signature, and then I also included at the end of the essay a quote from Will Smith, my unofficial father. I love him so much. I included a, a quote from Will Smith that said, if you're not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. Your life will become better by making others' lives better. I live by that quote. And so at the very end of the essay, I also included screenshots from my YouTube channel, from various older videos that I have, where one person said, I just received a full ride, thank you for this video. Another person said, this, thanks to this video, I got the scholarship. And the third person was like, thank you so much for this video. I had my scholarship interview today and I found out later in the day that I have been rewarded a $5,000 scholarship. Thank you. And that was the end of my scholarship essay. Sorry to interrupt mid-video, but I just wanted to say that this video that you're seeing here is one of a series. If you want me to send you a PowerPoint PDF version of this entire series, rather than waiting for each video to upload and take notes from, I can send you that. All you have to do is fill out this form and make your payment. Then I will email you the entire presentation that covers all the videos seen in this series. Also, I offer a service called Scholarly of where I personally help people edit their scholarship essays. A lot of the people I work with don't have the best English or grammatical skills, so that's where I come in. And prices for that start at just $25. And lastly, I wanted to plug in here my GoFundMe. This is mainly for raising funds for when I study abroad in Tokyo, Japan this summer. But if you want to donate to help with that, my main education expenses, or just to show your appreciation for what I've been doing through these videos, then please do. Also, you'll see on there two really cool original songs I made with visual videos that pay homage to mainly Japanese video games and anime that shaped my childhood. Anyways, all of what I mentioned will be linked down in the description box down below. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so now we're going to go into the key takeaways of the elements that went in my essay. So I went over this in my previous video, which you can check out if you want to. It's called um, how, I, how I was able to win several scholarships using basically the same exact essay. But one of the key takeaways that I want to point out regarding this is that I made sure to, number one, you want to mention 
the name of the scholarship. Why? Because that makes the scholarship committee feel that your video is more personalized to them. Because if you just say, if awarded this scholarship, it's not going to sound as personal. Whereas if you say somewhere in it, if awarded, insert the name of the scholarship, then it's going to feel personal to whoever's reading it. Another thing that I made sure to incorporate in my essay was to sound humble. And you don't just want to be like fake with your humbleness, you want to be genuine about it. And I'm always genuine about it. Like for example, where's that sentence? There's just something so much more powerful, rewarding and fulfilling in helping others than only serving myself. That's an example of how you want to sound humble in your essay. Another example of sounding humble in your essay is, where is it? Um, where I said, it can be discouraging, but in a way it is humbling to be denied a scholarship. It reminds me that I am not entitled to any scholarship and that the other person who won is just as deserving. It is not my place to envy their blessing when my own blessing may just be in the final stages of shipping its way into my life. See what I did there? Uh, what else? <laughs> Oh, another thing that I always mention within my essays um, is stating that I want to create my own scholarship fund, which I do. And I feel that everyone should do that because the national student loan debt is in the trillions right now. And I honestly feel like that could easily be combated against if a lot more well-to-do affluent people were to take the time to make scholarship funds such as these. But um. You want to include this because you have to consider your audience. Your audience is a scholarship committee. So what is one thing that they would love to hear from potential recipients? That they too would like to create a scholarship fund because like I mentioned in my earlier video, it has to do with relatability. You want to connect with your reader, your audience. So yeah, that's why I always make sure to include that. However, if you are someone who doesn't necessarily have that goal in mind of creating a scholarship fund or a scholarship in general, um, try and mention somewhere along the lines that you would like to do something that's somewhat related, like creating your own nonprofit, your own charity, your own foundation of some sort. Because again, as a scholarship committee, that ties into community service, um, volunteering, that type of thing. And they're going to love to hear that as compared to you just not talking about it at all. Okay, the second to last key takeaway that I wanted to mention regarding my essay is that I included at the very end basically a thank you note or a thank you. Is this recording? Oh yeah, okay, it is. Just making sure. Because before it wasn't and then I had to redo this whole shit. I mean, I can't cuss on here. But anyways, in my essay, I sometimes like to mention within the essay or within perhaps an email to whoever I'm sending the scholarship application to, a thank you note, a thank you letter addressed to the person over the scholarship as well as the scholarship committee who is responsible for assessing who gets awarded ultimately in the end. So you just, again, you want to say this because again, it makes it sound more personalized and when you are giving out the thank you note, of course, address in that note um, who it is. So in this case, it was addressed to future and those behind the I Am A Dreamer Scholarship Fund. And of course, at the very end of my scholarship, I included a quote from Will Smith. I don't know, I normally never, this is actually the first time I have ever included a quote in any of my scholarship essays, but I felt that in this particular case, it really, um, it really just fit in considering the audience and I guess I kind of I and I guess I kind of mentioned the quote as well I mean I've always known about the quote and everything but I guess I kind of meant I decided to mention it for once was because the scholarship was through Future's foundation and Future is a celebrity and so is Will Smith he's also a black male celebrity so I just thought why not include a quote from another influential inspiring famous black male figure and so I did, and it worked. I also included um, screenshots from my YouTube channel. Now I understand that not everyone watching this video has an inspiring um, YouTube channel, so of course you don't really have to include things like that, but if you have some type of service of where you have personally, I don't know, motivated, 
inspired, um, initiated change in your community and you have proof to back that up, whether that's through like emails, text messages, DMs, and it ties into your overall essay, whatever the prompt may be, don't be afraid to go ahead and mention that because that might just be one of the deciding factors as to why the scholarship committee will pick you over someone else because it makes your essay stand out more. And another thing I want to note about my essay is that I included hyperlinks to my YouTube channel so they could view it for themselves so that they know that I'm not just talking, that I actually mean business. And as far as formatting for my essay, I typically like to, um, to have my essay juxtaposed, meaning there's like no space on the left or right. Everything is like consistent because when things are just, just juxtaposed to the right or the middle or just to the left, it just looks off to me. It doesn't look as cohesive. I don't know. It's just me. And another thing about my essay is that I did not use Times New Roman font with double spacing. I personally hate it when scholarships ask that it has to be in Times New Roman double spacing because I feel like, okay, so if I were someone on the scholarship committee and I'm reading hundreds of essays and I see another essay that's in Times New Roman with double space fonting, meaning that there's going to it's going to look as if there's more words involved because the spacing gives the paper more pages to read I'm going to feel overwhelmed so what I try to do is when I'm writing an essay I typically use like Arial or Calibri fonts and I always have it um, the, uh, the line spacing at 1.5 instead of uh, double space because then there's less pages involved so it looks less overwhelming to the person reading it I don't know, I feel like that's one of the, I guess, psychological things involved with it. Because I know personally, from what I've heard, um, when it comes to like resumes, for example, if someone is looking at your resume and it's like three pages as opposed to someone with a resume that's one page, they're going to pay attention more to the resume that's shorter because it's less overwhelming and of course the same thing applies for like essays any type of writing or even videos because with videos for example audience retention rates are only like anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute and if you haven't caught the audience attention within that time span then they're not going to feel as compelled to end up watching all the way to the very end of the video especially if they see if they click on a video that says that it's 20 minutes as opposed to a video that's only five minutes but it has the same content so I, I guess that's just one of the psychological things that i try to do with um formatting my essays but yeah that's about all i have to say regarding that so in the next video which will be uploaded on february 25th tuesday i will be reading to you all the scholarship essay that I won from Floyd Mayweather, the boxer. I won that scholarship about a month prior to this one from Future. Now that scholarship is totally different from this one. It's constructed totally different. Like in this scholarship, I was mainly talking about my YouTube channel and how inspiring that has been for others and of course for me. But in my scholarship essay for um, Floyd Mayweather, it was a scholarship specifically for women in sports and media entertainment journalism basically. For that scholarship, I was talking more so about my career aspirations. So it's a totally different topic, totally different style of how I was writing. So I, I'm giving you guys basically two variations of how I've been able to win these scholarships. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and of course share this YouTube series with um, those who are looking for scholarships, whether that's students or parents. And also take the time to watch the rest of the series, which will be uploading every Tuesday and Friday. And also, if you happen to win a scholarship thanks to the advice in my videos, then please let me know in the comments down below or through email or DM on one of my social media platforms. Anyways, bye!